I used to wonder if mindset really mattered. I thought that success was all about talent and skill set, but I came to realize that someone who is great at what they do can quickly be bypassed by someone who is less talented but more confident. Remember this, confidence attracts, but unbelief repels. So if you have a mindset that you are average or that you never get great opportunities, without realizing it, you are creating your reality. Many of the people you look up to, they are not super smart or super talented. You are just as smart and talented as they are. They just latched on to their dream and developed the mental fortitude necessary to keep going when they were feeling the frustration that you might be feeling right now. A belief can create the disease as much as a belief can create the healing. And I go, so the significance of this is profound because nobody talks about the negative belief. And I go, negative beliefs are powerful. It's called nocebo, as you mentioned. And as I said, they can cause any disease and they can kill you just because you believe you're going to die. You can die just from the belief. We always have to update our versions about reality because it's the only way that we adapt. Don't believe everything you've read or heard. It just may not be the truth. There's always a greater truth that you and I can begin to investigate. Surely someone in eternity has had similar problems you and I and they've gotten beyond it, yes or no? So study that person. You wanna be wealthy? Study wealthy people. Don't just have some panacea that you're just gonna get wealthy. Read about wealthy people and find out that they lost everything and failed miserably 20, 50 times. But what they had as a, a characteristic, a quality in their personality is they were persistent and they kept changing and they kept forgiving and letting go of the past and kept going. And sooner or later they ran into it and when they had all the money they wanted, it was never about the money. It was just about that they could prove to themselves that they can do it. Stop rationalizing. Stop making excuses. Stop giving yourself little watered down assessments of where you're really at. Tell yourself the truth. Are you making yourself better? Are you making yourself worse? Are you moving forward or are you moving back? Anything that you have that you feel is a negative, it doesn't matter. Anything you feel is a positive, it doesn't matter. We're still the ones that make the decisions and we're the ones that move the needle because no one's doing it for us. We want to change the world, we decide we're going to change it. We want to change the economy in our home, we have to decide. We want to change the amount of time we spend with family or live into our true purpose or be the woman or God or, or man des God designed us to be. No one else is doing it for us. But what we can do is what you're doing. Gain capabilities from people who've already been there. Be a part of a group bigger than yourself. You already got the capabilities. You're already a part of a group bigger than yourself. You're already got the support of this amazing family. I think true behavior change is identity change. Um, and it's this shifting of your self-image, your beliefs, or the way you look at yourself. Because it's one thing to say that I want this, and something very different to say I am this. So people walk around with beliefs like that all the time. I'm not a language learner. I'm not good at math. I'm terrible with directions. I'm not good at remembering someone's name. Yeah. And once you have those type of, uh, once you adopt that identity, it becomes very easy to just reinforce that over and over again. And so uh, these three levels that you mentioned, outcomes, process, and identity, all three matter, but I think the key is that you want the direction of change to be in the right way, the, the right arrow. So if you start with the outcomes, if you start with the result, then you're like, oh, I really want this thing, and here's my plan for getting it. And most people just never think about the identity that comes underneath that. Like they think, I want to lose weight, or I want to be skinny, and if I follow this diet, then I'll be skinny. And then they, they don't really give any thought to the, the beliefs behind their behavior. But if you start the other way around, if you start at the identity, and you say, all right, who's the type of person that could lose weight? Well, maybe it's the type of person who doesn't miss workouts. Mm. Then you, foster, you start with that identity. You say, okay, I want to become the type of person who doesn't miss workouts. Here are the habits I need to build. And then whatever results come, just come naturally. So most people focus on the results and build a plan and let the identity come naturally. But that rarely works because their beliefs like conflict with your actions. But if you start with the identity and you build the habits to reinforce that, then the results just come on their own. 
You are quite capable, and I don't even know what you earn, but I do know this. You can turn your annual income into a monthly income. You're very capable of doing that. Now, you may think that I'm exaggerating. You can't exaggerate when you start talking about the potential of a human being. Stop and take a look at the way we communicate today. I remember when I was a kid when I saw the first television set. If anybody had told me at that time it was black and white, it was snow, and somebody would appear on the screen, and then they'd go away again. If somebody had said, listen, in your lifetime, you'll be able to put one on your wrist. Self-contained and living color. Somebody can shoot something going on on the other side of the world. You can watch the Olympics on your wrist. You'd have thought they were right out of their mind, but all that's going on, in fact, that's nothing today compared to what we're capable of doing. You stick a little camera on our computer and look at the other person and talk to them anywhere in the world. Doesn't even cost you a nickel. Are we moving ahead? I think we're moving ahead at a rapid rate. But I'm going to tell you something. The people that are taking this there are not letting the paradigm stop them. And I don't want you to let the paradigm stop you. I want you to stop and think of where you're going and what you're doing. And when you go to break out of the paradigm, it's because you're using a bigger idea than what you're conditioned to. Now, remember I said the conditioning is cause you to feel comfortable? It's only when you go to change the conditioning that you feel the discomfort. And when you get emotionally involved with it, you can be thinking of the change until you internalize it, nothing happens. But the second you internalize it, everything goes haywire. Why? You're dealing with the central nervous system. You're messing with the paradigm. You've heard the saying, habits die hard? Well, you put a million of them together and see what happens. Yet it's like a wall, and you bounce off that wall, and you'll go back and live in your conformed or, you know, state of bondage and justify why you should stay there. Don't let that happen. Absolutely refuse to let that happen. If you've got an inspiration to move, to quit your job, to start a business, whatever you want to do, step out and do it. I mentioned in another series that God's gift to us was more talent and ability than we'll ever hope to use in our lifetime. And our gift to God is to develop as much of that talent and ability as we can in this lifetime. The future belongs to the risk takers, not the security seekers. Life is perverse in the sense that the more you seek security, the less of it you have. But the more you seek opportunity, the more likely it is that you will achieve the security that you desire. Whenever you feel fear or anxiety, and you need to bolster your courage to persist in the face of obstacles and setbacks, switch your attention to your goals. Create a clear mental picture of the person that you would like to be, performing the way you would like to perform. There is nothing wrong with thoughts of fear as long as you temper them with thoughts of courage and self-reliance. Whatever you dwell upon grows. So be careful. And this brings us to a very important mental principle called the law of accumulation. The application of this law is a fundamental reason for success in every field, including yours. This law says that every great life or great career is an accumulation of hundreds and perhaps thousands of efforts that nobody ever sees or appreciates. Great success is the result of countless hours, maybe even months and years, of preparation and hard work toward the goal of toward the goal of becoming very good at what you are doing. This law of accumulation says that life is very much like a balance sheet, with both credits and debits. Every time you do something positive to enhance your abilities and to improve your life, you get a credit on the credit side of your ledger. Each time you waste your time, or neglect to take advantage of an opportunity to learn and grow, you get a debit on the debit side of your ledger. Here's the key, everything counts. Everything that you do or fail to do is written down and totaled up on your balance sheet. Everything that you do or fail to do counts in some way. Nothing is neutral. Everything is either moving you toward a better life or moving you away from it. Everything counts, a successful, happy, self-confident person is an individual who has consciously and deliberately built up a lot of credits on his or her balance sheet. An unhappy, negative or insecure person is a person who has a lot of debits on his or her balance sheet because the only things that count are your actions. It seems that every positive and constructive action you engage in adds up and increases your levels of self-confidence and self-esteem. The law of incremental improvement, perhaps the most important corollary of the law of accumulation, is what is called the law of incremental improvement. This is really the law that explains how you move from wherever you are to the top of your field. 
This is the law that explains all great success in America or anywhere else in the world. This law simply states that a person becomes good at his or her chosen field by improving incrementally, continuously, over a long period of time.